from New Hanover County Schools Television. Powered by students. This is your school news. Welcome to your school news for the week of October 6th through the 12th, 2014. I'm Nikki Stepanio. And I'm Dylan Grace. Topping our newscast this week. New survey shows parents are struggling to help with homework. Hoggard High students get the opportunity to view critically acclaimed documentary. And League of Women Voters support education bond referendum. Our top story this week in a new survey just released, Pollister's report that parents are struggling to help children with their homework. The numbers show that most middle school parents are unable to do homework tasks set for their children. Fathers find helping with homework harder than mothers do, and numbers are equally split across the socioeconomic groups. We have this report from YSN reporter Heather Jensen. A national survey revealed that more than half of parents with children in grades K-8 through eight admit that they aren't up to the task of helping their children with homework. The National Center for Families Learning Survey found that 60% of parents admitted that their children's homework was a struggle. That's up just a little over 10% from last year's survey, which found 49% of parents suffered from chronic homework headaches. The survey results showed that either more parents are being truthful about their nightly woes helping their children with homework, or the lessons being sent home by teachers are getting tougher with the national rollout of the Common Core State Standards. The survey found that roughly a third of parents, 33.5%, said they didn't understand the subject matter, which represents a significant decrease from last year, when almost 50% of parents blamed their lack of subject knowledge. English proved the toughest for fathers, science the hardest for mothers, and math remains the subject that parents and students continue to struggle with at home. Parents with students in middle school should seek out help from their child's teacher. Most math teachers offer lunchtime help or after-school tutoring on a regular basis. You should encourage your child to take advantage of those opportunities. Additionally, teachers' websites have useful links for students to get assistance on topics they are learning, as well as links to the student textbook, which often comes with video lessons that students and parents can watch for additional help. Finally, please see the New Hanover County Schools website under the Parents tab for a link to the instructional resources in each of the major content areas. Here you will find other tips and information about what your child is learning in school and ways you can help them be successful. The survey did find that about a quarter of parents, or 25%, said they were simply too busy to provide homework help. Last year's survey found about fifth of parents lacked the time to help. Surprisingly, a small percentage of parents said their homework frustrations were because their child didn't want their help. The National Center for Families Learning, which is based in Kentucky, partnered with Google Consumer Surveys to conduct the poll in August. There were 1,039 online responses. Reporting for Your School News, this is Heather Jensen. Students at Hoggard High School got the opportunity to see the critically acclaimed documentary, Althea. The film tells the story of the tennis great Althea Gibson overcoming adversity to become one of the greatest players in history. Lenny Simpson, who was mentored by Gibson, presented the film to the students and talked with them about her great achievements in the 1950s. Gibson was the first African-American tennis player to win one of the four major singles tournaments and helped integrate her sport at the height of the civil rights movement. She twice won Wimbledon and the U.S. Championships, now known as the U.S. Open. I learned that Althea was, she had to overcome a lot of adversity and um, she had to take a lot of opportunities and her, and she had to grow up in a very hard, she had to grow up from a very hard childhood and she ended up becoming world champion, which shows us a lot about overcoming you know, hard times. I do think other people should see this documentary because it teaches them a lot about how to overcome all of the hard times and how they can, if they follow their dreams, they can accomplish things. After the showing, the students also participated in a question and answer session with Mr. Simpson, who was mentored by Gibson and also featured in the film. Simpson says they plan to take the film to all of the schools in New Hanover County with the hope of inspiring young minds to achieve great things. In other news, the League of Women Voters of the Lower Cape Fear has announced their support of the upcoming education bond referendum on November 4th election ballot. 
In a little over a month, New Hanover County voters will be asked to approve a $160 million bond to fund 14 critical projects throughout New Hanover County schools. The projects include the building of a new elementary school, renovations of several schools, and improved safety, security, technology for all schools. For more information about the education bond, visit the bond website at www.nhcs.net and click on the bright red apple. To schedule a bond presentation for your organization, contact the NHCS Public Relations Department at 910-254-4245. Finally, the New Hanover County Board of Education in August awarded Caroline Cook and Miranda Lancaster, both recent graduates of New Hanover County Schools, the 2014 Board of Education Student Scholarship. In its mission to attract quality teachers, the Board of Education awards two $1,000 scholarships providing incentives, recognition, and financial assistance to outstanding seniors in New Hanover County High Schools. The scholarships are given to the accredited North Carolina College or University of the Student's Choice and will total $4,000 each over a four-year period. Both Carolina and Miranda graduated from Laney High School and participated in the Laney Teacher Cadet Program. Now, when your school news continues, we have an exciting lunch menu forecast. Plus, coming up in 60 seconds, we'll have reports on Japanese education students visit Pine Valley Elementary School, October is National Bully Bullying Awareness Month, and we have a report on North Carolina Association of Gifted and Talented Opens nomination for Outstanding Gifted Teacher. This is your school news on cable and online. Look for our blue logo for all the latest news online at www.nhcs.net. Don't go away, we'll be right back. When I have an asthma attack, I feel scared. Sometimes my parents have to take me to the hospital. I feel like a fish with no water. You know how to react to their asthma attacks. Here's how to prevent them. Call 1-866-NO-ATTACKS. Visit www.noattacks.org or call your doctor. Because even one attack is one too many. Welcome back to Your School News. Last week, a dozen Japanese education students from Osaka University visited students at Pine Valley Elementary School. It was an exciting chance for these future teachers in Japan to observe the American public education system and interact with the Pine Valley students. During their day at the school, some of the Japanese educators read to the top tigers, while others stood in front of the class teaching American students how to count from 1 to 10 in Japanese or how to write their names using the Japanese alphabet. We have, a, we have a, an agreement with Osaka University of Education to kind of facilitate the exchanges of students and faculty. And so every, every spring uh, in June, I take our students, uh, some of the education students to Japan to look at their schools and, uh, and look at how they do things there. And then every August, September, they bring their students here. Their students come a little bit longer than we do because they also come here to help learn their English skills. And since they're training to be teachers as well, we try to get them out in our schools just to see how we do it. And so today, they've spent these two days here at Pine Valley, and uh, today they've been actually teaching some classes. Well, the teachers here are very passionate. They are very talented to encourage students to learn, not to push them to learn. In our case, maybe sometimes we push students to learn something because of examinations, homeworks. But here, it seems to me, uh, all the students are enjoying learning. They are also, how to say, have fun to learn. That's a really, really big difference, I think. These future Japanese educators 
toward the elementary school campus, including an outdoor classroom, track, butterfly garden, and media center. It was exciting to see the impact that these young students from a small elementary school in Wilmington had on their guests from the other side of the world. It gave the visiting Japanese students and the opportunity to develop a global perspective on their academic disciplines. It also opened up the world to the Pine Valley students and helped them develop a global perspective as many may not ever have an opportunity to travel abroad themselves. This month, the school system joins other school systems across the country, kicking off their annual National Bullying Awareness Campaign. But just what is bullying? At first glance, many people might think this behavior is easy to define. Their first image of bullying might be a physically intimidating boy beating up a smaller classmate. While that can still be considered bullying today, everyone needs to know that bullying behaviors can be much more complex and varied than the stereotype. We have the special report from YSM reporter Abby Bowman. Bullying is a serious problem in homes, schools, and communities. Often dismissed as an adolescent rite of passage, research clearly indicates bullying is learned behavior and damaging to the academic, physical, social, and emotional development of all involved. Bullying is not only a problem of youth, but is one that spans all ages. Bullying is a conscious, willful, deliberate act of, of harm and terror. Um, students who bully typically um, have been thinking about it, and it's, their intent is to harm and to create fear in the victims. In order to be considered bullying, the behavior must be aggressive and include an imbalance of power. Kids who bully use their power, such as physical strength, access to embarrassing information, or popularity, to control or harm others. Power imbalances can change over time and in different situations, even if they involve the same people. Uh, but these days, bullying can be physical, um, the, the verbal aggression, the social aggression, we see that a lot with our girls, the social isolation, um, the, you know, trying to um, pull other students away from them, oh, don't be that person's friend, spreading rumor gossip, um, sexual harassment as a form of bullying, um, and, and now in the, the age of social media, there's, there's cyberbullying. Bullying can affect everyone, those who are bullied, those who bully, and those who witness bullying. Bullying is linked to many negative outcomes, including impacts on mental health, substance use, and suicide. Unfortunately, bullying is very permanent for some students, um, for some children. It can carry on into um, their whole life. They unfortunately believe uh, what they hear and what they see, um, and it can affect their self-esteem. Their goals, their dreams um, are tainted, unfortunately. Bullying is a pervasive problem in schools, affecting almost a third of students in grades 6 through 10. Because of the significant negative consequences of this behavior for all involved, it should not be viewed as just a normal part of growing up. To be addressed effectively, both individual and system level interventions are required. If we do not intervene with bullies, we not only place targets at risk for physical injury, depression, anxiety, and low self-esteem, but also significantly increase the likelihood that bullies will develop into antisocial adults. Reporting for Your School News, this is Abby Bowman. Kids and germs go hand in hand, sometimes quite literally. Sneezes, coughs, runny noses, spills, and messes are facts of everyday life with children, and that's why it's never too soon to teach little ones about germs and ways to stay clean and healthy. In preparation for flu season, Nurse Sue Kotzeb at Forest Hills Global Elementary read to Miss Carranza's dual emerging class a book Germs are not for sharing. The book is a short course for kids on what germs are, what they do, and why it's so important to cover them up, block them from spreading, and wash them down the drain. Using simple words, complement warm, inviting, full-color illustrations that show real-life situations kids can relate to. It was a wonderful learning experience for all the Forest Hill students. Students in Ms. Murphy's class at Freeman Elementary have been using Wilson Foundations to improve their reading skills. Wilson Foundations designed for K-3 students. The curriculum is an engaging, fun, phonological and phonic, awareness, phonics, and spelling program. Rather than completely replace core curriculum, Foundations provide the research-validated strategies that complement installed programs to meet federal standards and serve the needs of all children. Teachers at Freeman incorporate a 30-minute daily foundations lesson into their language arts classroom instruction. 
Foundation lessons focus on carefully sequenced skills that include print knowledge, alphabet awareness, phonological awareness, phonemic awareness, decoding vocabulary, fluency, and spelling. Students at Freeman are benefiting from this exciting and innovative program. Finally, each year the North Carolina Association of Gifted and Talented recognizes the state's outstanding teacher of the gifted. New Hanover County Schools will nominate one district representative for this award. Nominations may be made by a student, teacher, administrator, or community member. The nomination form is located on the New Hanover County Schools AIG website. Nominations are due to Sarah Gubitz at sarah.gubitz at nhcs.net or 6410 Carolina Beach Road, Wilmington, North Carolina, 28412 by October 30th. Teachers accepting the nomination will fill out the North Carolina Gifted and Talented application, which will be anonymously reviewed by AIG staff and Gifted Advisory Council members. The district nominee for Outstanding Teacher of the Gifted will be notified by November 21st. Now don't go away. Coming up, Castle Hain Elementary School students learn the game of golf. Plus, we have the Hunchbill Fair. Your school news will continue after the break. Lace up the cleats, put on the pads, and tape up those ankles. The football edition of Sports Roundtable is back for its 15th season on the Learning Network. I'm Marty Fuhrer. If you're a high school football fan, then join me for Sports Roundtable. We'll feature the area's most in-depth look at local 4A gridiron action. From a strong defense to an explosive offense, we spotlight it all on Sports Roundtable. Each week, you'll get a first-hand account of all the plays from New Hanover County Schools four head football coaches. So don't miss the Sports Roundtable, Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. right here on the Learning Network. Sports Roundtable is made possible with the support of Papa John's Pizza. Welcome back to your school news. In this block of our newscast, we are featuring special reports and in-depth features. This school year started with close to 27,000 students enrolled in New Hanover County Schools. It is forecasted that the number is expected to grow significantly in coming years. To continue to be a district of excellence and to provide all students a high quality education, measures must be taken to maintain our facilities and keep safety a top priority. This month, we'll be looking at some of the core components of the proposed education bond on the ballot in November. These reports focus on security, new construction, school improvements, and this week technology. A recent poll by the Leading Education by Advancing Digital Commission has found that the vast majority of K-12 parents support greater use of technology in education and believe that school systems should do more to improve access. Improving that access is a key part of the education bond on the November 4th ballot. With the passing of the bond, upgrades to network switches and routers across the county will be made so that equipment meets a one gigabyte per second standard. It is 10 times faster than what we have. Uh, our standard right now is 100 megabits per second. With more online learning, online testing, more cloud-based resources, you'll see improved websites loading faster. Um, you'll see the technology perform as it should. In the 21st century classroom, technology now plays a greater role in improving education. It provides more individualized and flexible learning, offers more hands-on learning opportunities, helps students become more engaged in their own learning, makes closer connections between the classroom and the real world, and exposes students to experts outside the classroom. Improved technology at our school that would, would help students from the perspective of they're working in an age where the material, or the technology they have at home, the computers they have, their phones and everything is better than we can provide at school. Oftentimes kids will come into school, they will have files and, and, and such that are, that are from home 
from software that we don't even have yet. Um, they're also used to things working at a certain speed. They're, they're, they're used to a, a, a more um, private sector type uh, technology at home. And when they come to school, they oftentimes they, they'll, they'll kind of laugh or complain about like where, where the technology is. Another big advantage to improve technology is the degree to which technology can better enable teachers to provide faster feedback to students and parents. Uh, the school here, I think we networked this school about 14 years ago, 15 years ago, so we're running on network technology from almost 15 years ago, which is beyond obsolete. <laughs> Today we live in a high-tech global economy. Technology, the internet, the World Wide Web, search engines, handheld electronic devices, and social media all put us in touch with people, places, information, and ideas instantly and all the time. Today, technology has opened access to the world and provided a world of resources for students. The Education Bond will improve technology in the classroom and help to keep that door wide open for our students today and in the future. Reporting for Your School News, this is Bobby Blue. To learn all about the Education Bond, you can visit a special comprehensive website that contains all the facts and information needed to become a fully informed. Just go to www.nhcs.net and click on the bright red apple with the tagline, Our Schools, Our Community, Our Future. And join us next week for another special report as we count down to the November Education Bond. It's time now for this week's Lunch Bill Affair. Gone are the days of Mystery Me and the crabby hairnet wearing lunch lady. Across the county, school lunchrooms have gotten a facelift and a menu makeover. This week, our guest lunch menu analyst, Emily Katz, joins us with the week's school lunch menu so parents, students, teachers, and everyone working with the new Hanover County School Systems can plan their lunchtime options. Thanks and welcome to this week's edition of the Lunch Bill Affair. We've got an exciting menu this week with dishes influenced by a number of classical, classic global recipes. Let's take a look at this sec week's sections. On Tuesday, October 7th, start this week off right with a beef taco or fish nuggets. On the side, barbecue pinto beans, glazed carrots, a garden salad, and fresh food. On Wednesday, October 8th, enjoy either a grilled cheese sandwich or cheesy breadsticks. For your sides, choose from tomato and cucumber salad, a garden salad, or apple crisps. On Thursday, October 9th, you've got two entree choices, chicken quesadilla with Spanish rice or a BLT sandwich with cheese cubes. On the side, NC sweet potatoes, garden salad, or fresh fruit. On Friday, October 10th, choose a turkey and cheese hoagie or a hot dog with chili as your main entry. Then, on the side, enjoy macaroni salad, baked beans, carrot sticks, spiced apples, and a garden salad. For the weekend, I've got my healthy tip. This weekend, for a snack, try dipping your favorite fruits in chocolate. Remember to use semi-sweet or dark chocolate to keep it healthy. If fruit isn't your thing, the chocolate can make it a little more enticing. Remember, it's all right. It's all about eating right. After the weekend, gather in the cafeteria for orange chicken or pizza for your sides. Choose from broccoli, carrots, or a garden salad. All the menus this year include more fresh produce, whole grains, and lower calorie snacks. Plus, our school cafeterias have done away with frying and cut back on fats, sodium, and sugars. Now, taking a look once again at your lunch entrees for the week, you've got some great selections for the week with some really great sides to choose from throughout the week. Tuesday, don't miss out on the beef tacos, beet tacos, or fish nuggets, cheesy breadsticks, and don't forget about those chicken quesadillas on Thursday. That's what's on slate for lunch at your school's cafeteria, so don't miss any of these nutritious, delicious, and healthy meals. From the newsroom, this is Emily Katz. Back to you. Thanks, Emily. Don't forget, you can also catch the Lunch Below Fair during the morning show here on the Learning Network and get lots of healthful nutrition information online at www.nhcs.net slash nutrition. Now don't go away. Coming up, Castle Hayne Elementary students learn the game of golf. Your school news will continue after the break. New Hanover County is growing once again. The cornerstone of our community, our schools, are bulging at the seams. The November school bond will help curb those growing pains. 
Funds from the bond will improve technology infrastructure across the district. The November bond will improve security across the district for every child and school. It will fund the building of an elementary school in the northern part of the county and rebuild two older, overcrowded elementary schools. It will fund repairs and renovations to both high schools and middle schools. For more information on the November school bond, visit the school system's website at www.nhcs.net. Remember, it's our schools, our community, our future. There's a better way to have fun with history. Visit americaslibrary.gov. Log on, play around, learn something. Welcome back to Your School News. Students at Castle Hayne Elementary got a lesson in the game of golf. Volunteers with the Wilmington Junior Golf Academy work with the young golfers teaching them the basics. Students are shown how to hold, set up, and safely swing a putter on wedge. Once they had learned the basics, students began by learning how to putt. It started with short putts of two to three feet to help build confidence in the young golfers. The next stages for the students will include longer putts, how to chip, pitch, and complete full swings. Golf is a lifetime sport that can have a positive influence on children in many ways. By introducing the game of golf side by side with caring volunteers, students see how honesty, judgment, and responsibility relates to other areas of life. Golf teaches character education and etiquette. It also introduces the young golfers to math, develops motor skills, coordination, and flexibility. That does it for this edition of Your School News. Recapping some of our main stories, new survey shows parents are struggling to help with homework, Hoggard High student got the opportunity to view critically acclaimed documentary on tennis great Althea Gibson, and League of Women Voters have endorsed the education bond referendum on the November 4th ballot. Remember, your school news is on cable and online, and don't forget to start your morning with our light and lively morning show, weekdays at 6 a.m. I'm Nikki Stepanio. And I'm Dylan Grace. On behalf of the entire YSN crew, thanks for watching New Hanover County Schools TV on the Learning Network of the Cape Fear. Have a great day!